uh, election that things were happening. Yeah, hiding. all the rallies and all of that. Mm -hmm. And the Kum Mela, oh my God. <laughs> I know that was such a horrible sight, really. Quite scary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, it's 8.15 um, nearly. Shall we begin, Sandeep yeah. Bhai? Yeah, 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 let's begin. So, um, Jai Jin and everyone, if I can request you to be on mute, please. Um, but you can show your videos. Um, that way we know that there's an actual human being behind the, the um, person. Um, so it would be good if, if you please um, show your videos. So we start off um, the evening. Um, this is, uh, we've been continuing with this book uh, last term. So we'll be continuing again this term. And, and let me just quickly recite the Navkar Mantra. So if you can please close your eyes. Namo Arihantaram Namo Sitaram Namo Ayariyaram Namo Uvachayaram Namo Loisabhasahuram Eso Panchanamukaro Sava Pava Parasaro Mangalaram Chasavesim Padamam Havai Mangalam Chai Jinendra everyone. So this evening, it is our honor to have uh, Rajan Bhai Shah joining in from uh, Sri Channa Vidya Pith, Nairobi. Um, she, Rajan Bhai uh, happens also to be my brother-in-law, <laughs> but uh, that is just by the way of a slight light introduction. But on a more uh, sincere introduction, Rajan Bhai has been teaching at Sri Channa Vidya Pith, Nairobi, um, adult classes um, for the last 25 odd years. And over the years, I have seen his own development uh, in terms of his own internal spirituality, his own understanding, uh, and it has been incredible uh, what he has learned. And, and it's not just you know, it's not textbook knowledge that he has um, acquired. It is more of an internal knowledge and internal understanding. And um, uh, one thing that struck me was his, his grasp of Gujarati. Um, when I first met Rajan, he could not even understand. I mean, he could not speak Gujarati. He could not um, understand or, or write Gujarati. Now he's able to, to, to not only write, but read Gujarati as well. And, and, and this is all due to his development and necessity to understand our scriptures. Um, and that, that is driven for him to learn, uh, un, uh, learn this knowledge. So um, to not, today he will be continuing this wonderful book, The Art of, um, uh, it's called Amar Vani, which is Art of Life. Um, very practical book. Um, it is available um, on, on Google if you, if you Google it and you know, there's a link which we can share. Um, and it's a wonderful book worth reading, but it, it, need, it needs somebody to, to illuminate and what better person than Rajan Pai. So I now hand over to Rajan Pai, but I request you please show your videos. Do not be silent witnesses, get involved, get, because this is a very discussive um, book. So please ask questions, um, you know, just unmute yourself um, and excuse yourself and ask, do not, um, you know, wait until the end. If you, if something is burning, or some burning question within you, then please ask. Thank you, Rajan Bhai, to you. Thank you, Sandeep Bhai, for those kind words of introduction. Uh, for the benefit of this wonderful audience, uh, let me just tell you on a lighter note 
that the person who actually introduced me to this path is none other than Sandipai himself. So actually, all the thanks goes to him for bringing us all together onto this common platform. Great. So tonight's session, Art of Living, and we're actually going to share lots of thoughts from Amar Muniji, who happens to be not only a great saint, but also a great social reformer. And uh, before we start tonight's session, I think it would be right to pay our respects to and salutations to all the gurus who have revealed the truth to us, which is unfragmented, infinite, timeless, divine, and it pervades the entire universe. Akanda Mandala Param. Please listen to this prayer. <laughs> this session with the first question, what is life and what is the essence of life? And what Gurudev is trying to tell us is life is nothing but ceaseless conflict of opposite forces. So wherever we go, we are going to be in the tempest of life where we will be standing across opposite forces. And what does one do what the one who is on the path of duty, path of duty towards the self, towards the family, towards society, or towards nation. So what Gurudev is trying to tell us is that the essence of life, despite all the conflicts and opposite forces that we face, at each path of duty, we do not deviate from the path of duty. We have to have a lion-like character, and not timid like a hare. So first, that's our first learning lesson today, that what do I want to be like? Do I want to be the lion in my life, or do I want to be the timid hare in life? And Gurudev is trying to tell us or remind us of the bravery 
and the himat of uh, Bhagwan Mahavir, that you have to have a lion-like character because life is going to present you with conflict and opposite forces all the time. So the first learning lesson for today is one, do not deviate from your path of duty. And secondly, establish a line like nature, not timid like a hare, not wanting to run away from the path of duty. And path of duty would be duty towards the self, duty towards family, society, or the nation at large. So that's uh, the first thing in terms of essence. The second thing Gurudev is trying to establish in us is life is dynamism. And the, the, the slope there, or the saying goes, chale chalo, chale chalo. So there is no time for stagnation. The whole idea is that we must march forward in life. And we have two pictures there. Um, now again, we're trying, he's trying to tell us do you want to be ever flowing like the beautiful waterfall or you want to be stagnant like the pond in the village? Which one do we want to be? And this dynamism, he says, needs to be applied at individual level, society level, again, even at the national level. So life needs to be dynamic and the breath of life is in the flow of life. This dynamism he's trying to communicate to us could be both in terms of our thought processes as well as our actions. So are we dynamic in our thought processes? Are we dynamic in our actions? Are we able to change according to time, place, and condition? Again and again, we hear the word Dravya Shetra Bhav Kal. So he's trying to tell us that Mahavir Bhagwan was telling us that there is nothing static. And that's why also the concept of Pariyai has been um, established, the concept of modification has been established in Jainism very well. So the slogan to remember is Chale Chalo Chale Chalo. Let's keep on marching, no, move, no room for stagnation in life. We all need to sit back and examine that where am I stagnating? Am I stagnating at my thought process level? Am I stagnating at my actions? I need to be like the flow of a river. The river keeps on quenching the thirst of those along the way, and eventually it merges into the ocean. So I want to be ever flowing, starting from the waterfall into the river, into the ocean, and not just the pond, which becomes a point of stagnation, pollution. Do I want to be a standpoint of contamination and contempt? So that's the second thing, dynamism. We need to have dynamism in both our thought processes and our actions. So if you look at the ideologies that Gurudev is trying to present to us, he's trying to give us a way of life that will make both our inner world as well as our outer world, very beautiful and magnificent. The third point that it's going to talk about is the path of life. And again, interestingly, every analogy takes us back to nature. And the question they're asking us is, do you want a life of a stray and a timid dog? Or do you want the life of a hungry wolf? The ideology is, do you want to be weak? Do you want to be frightened? Do you just want to be flattering other people? Do you want to lead life just to make or waste life, making other people happy? Do you always just want to surrender to other people towards injustice? And that's the reference he's making to a timid or a stray dog. And such cowards, he says, can never face the battle of life. So if we want to face the battle of life, we can't be timid like a, a stray dog. And then on the other hand, he's saying, 
that he can't, you can't be like a wolf also, ever while howling all the time, having no, no, nothing but fire around you. So if your nature is just fire all the time, if you're ever howling, you have no cooling waters around you, you're as hard as a stone, then you have no place in life. So what he wants is to have the perfect blend between hardness and tenderness in life. And again, he's comparing those qualities with things in nature for us to be able to absorb these ideologies in a much simpler manner. So what he's saying is that, do you have a judicial balance, a samyak or a reasonable balance in your personality between hardness and tenderness? And once again, as we move along, hardness and tenderness will be talked about again later during the talk. The next thing Gurudev is trying to tell us is what's your purpose in life? Very small, but very effective ideologies that Gurudev was trying to present to us. Is your purpose in life just accumulation and amassing material possessions? Are we just here to collect material wealth? And he says that for a shravak, he needs to collect so sangra karma nuche, but with the objective of judicial distribution. Distribution, or what we call vitaran in Gujarati, or dispensation, that you need to dispense, what you collect has to have an equitable distribution or dispension in life. So we need to sit back and see that what I am accumulating, is it beyond my reasonable needs? Am I working towards the betterment of a larger society around me? Yeah, so that's, that's the point on accumulation. Interestingly, Art of Life also incorporates the keys to success. And all of us, whether those of us who are working, those of us who run families, uh, those of us who run businesses, all would like to know what are the keys to success. And Gurudev says that your tasks become uninteresting, unsuccessful, and incomplete. Why? Why do our tasks become like that? And he says that most of us have no faith in what we are doing. We do our tasks half-heartedly. We're not really interested in doing what we are doing. And we do not put our full energy and power towards that task. And that's what's resulting in our failure. And he says that for anybody to succeed in life, there are four keys that we need. And the four keys are faith, faith in what you want to achieve or what you are doing, 100% devotion towards your task, making sure that your buddhi is and your intelligence is applied 100% towards that task and full energy in terms of your physical energy also being applied to that task. And he says that those are the four keys to anyone's success. And he says that the one who wants to be trusted and who wants to have a sense of responsibility towards a larger organization or larger setup in society must exhibit these elements of success. That is faith, devotion, intelligence, and energy. So four keys absolutely necessary for our success in life. Would we have ever thought that Asadu Bhagwant would be giving us these keys to success. Look at his thought process. Look at the wider aspects of our living that Gurudev had thought of 
more than 50 years ago, and they still apply to the kind of life that we're leading today. And that's why we look at him as a social reformer. The next thing, which up in these current times, it really applies well to us. Gurudev says that there is only one difference between those who are brave and those who are cowards. And Gurudev says that the difference is one step. The one who is brave moves forward in the battlefield of life. And the one who is a coward will always move backwards. Yeah? And that is one step forward. We all need to sit back and see where in our lives are we being the cowards? Where do we step back from? And where in our lives are we brave enough to put that one foot forward. And we can only progress, as we said earlier, that the slogan is chale chalo, chale chalo. Keep marching, keep marching. And it's only possible with one foot forward. Yeah. So do we want to be the brave one? Do we want to be the coward one? So all the ideas that he's, he's shared under Art of Living are conscious choices that he wants us to make as humans to progress not only towards the development of our inner world, but even our Bahia or our external progress is equally important. The beauty of our inner world will also have its reflection on the beauty of our outer world. So bravery is, is, is a path that works both inwards as well as on our development of our outer world. So Nibai, we, if anybody has any questions, just a wave of a hand is good. And yeah, um, any questions, please ask. Don't feel shy. Yes, just a wave is good enough. And then we can look at them at each stage as we come across. Rajan Bhai, I have a question. Yes. Uh, when, when we talk about the brave and the coward, what, do you, what does it mean when we say we take a step back? When we're talking about cowards. Here, here, is, here is talking about the difficulties that we face in life, the challenges that we face in life, um, the opportunities that we miss out on, and why does this all happen to us? Yeah, because uh, we are not. Uh, previous slide, ma jam ki duke. Approach energy no upyog che. Even our physical energy, um, we do not use it to the full capacity. Yeah, and and to overcome these challenges, uh, suffering, everything that comes to us in life comes to us for a purpose. And we will only be able to work towards that higher purpose if we step forward towards meeting those challenges and um, getting the learning lessons from those challenges that we face in life. Mm. Whereas if we, that's why they're telling us that um, dreams have a, we have a, a misunderstanding that ours is a path of non-action. Yeah, mm. but actually ours, for J, the path of Mahavir is a path of Samya Pravruti or acting within reasonable means. Do what is reasonable to achieve your goals or to perform your duties. Yeah, and to be able to do that, it needs the path of the brave one to keep stepping forward and developing as we move along. That's what Gurudev is trying to uh, communicate to us. Is that clear, Rita Ben? Ha, ha, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, it is really interesting because um, um, we would say, oh, if you are comparing, like you had that wolf, picture of wolf yes. there. And we would always say, why? We don't want to be a, a wolf. We look at him, you know, he's a violent, you know that sort of, you know, status which is showing, you know, 
But uh, it is interesting how Gurudev has portrayed oh, this. So going back to that, to bring out your qualities. energies whatever abilities that we have, can we use it to the betterment of the people around us? Yeah, technically we we keep on saying what are we doing with what qualities we get? And at the same time, ke je hardness che, e bija upar, e no prayog karwani apane koi jarur nati. It actually should be used on ourselves, to better ourselves. Any other question? Or we're okay to move? Yeah, let's move. Um, if people have questions, they will unmute and ask. Great. Please, can Great. I request everybody not to be passive, get in interactive, please. Thank you. Lots of learning happens through questions. Um, Vina Ben is usually with us during the week, and she knows that through the questions, we do lots of extra learning. Um, so it'll be good to have the questions going. So the next idea that Gurudev is trying to present to us is the issue of success and fame. What should we be chasing? And in the current times, this is a very important question that we should be asking ourselves. And Siddhi is the success, Prasiddhi is the fame. And spiritually, the understanding is that success should be what we should be after. Perfection is what we should be uh, chasing at the moment. And fame will follow on its own. In the current circumstances, what's our situation? Or what's, what's the majority of us after? What are we after? Perfection or fame? Fame. Fame, yeah? And he says, that's why your equation of life is wrong. He says, go back. And start with perfecting yourself, and fame will automatically follow. And he says that where there is, without perfection, you may get some fame, but it's very temporary. It wouldn't last for long. So he says in, in life, we have to strive for perfection. So the ideology there is that to be able to succeed in any walk of life, Perfection is what we should aim for, and fame will automatically follow. So a drawing line between success and fame, message out there is success is what is the right thing to be chasing and not fame. Interesting one. He talks about leadership now. And Gurudev says, either you have to be a leader or you have to be led. There are only two pathways. Either you be a leader or you be led. And again, he says the slogan is chale chalo, chale chalo. And to keep marching, either you are the one leading the march or you're following somebody who has the ability to lead the march. You need to sit back and look at your own qualities and see where your uh, ideologies, your uh, attitudes, and your uh, clarity in seeking your goals, if those are perfect, then you can be the leader. You can be the one in red. And you don't need to be led by other people. And you, you will lead others onto the path. But he says that until you develop that, until you become perfect, until you have the clarity of hitting the bullseye, then you need, because the slogan is keep marching, 
He says, you need to follow somebody. And we need to keep following somebody so that we don't stagnate. Again, going back to nature, we want to be ever flowing like the river. We don't want to be like the pond. He says that until our thinking opens out, it's okay to be led by somebody else. And let's keep on marching. So identify in all your different aspects of life, you will have a guru that you want to follow. You will identify role models. So it's our spiritual progress, so we know who is our role model. If we want to become a healthy person, then we know who our role model is. Yeah. If we want to know or identify the best cooking methodologies, um, then we know which person we should be following. So everywhere, till we get to the stage of perfection, it's okay to have somebody who we look on to and be able to emulate. And that emulation should result in our development. Yeah? So Dr. Idea... I have a question. Yes. Um, you know, you talk about uh, that until we, be, we uh, develop the qualities of leadership, uh, it's, it's good to be led um, and identify. The problem with the world is that, um, you know, we can easily be led astray by people who we try and follow, not only in spiritual or religious matters, but in, in a lot of other things. You know, there are so many so-called gurus who, you know, whether it's finance or it is anything in life, um, who will say, oh, you follow me. And I, I think it's reached a point where mankind is so skeptical of anybody who says, follow me. Uh, you know, there's that, that cynicism which has come in because people are not sure whether that person is genuine or whether he will be, you, you will develop yourself by following him or not. I totally agree with you, Sam, uh, Sandipai. And that's why Bhagwan presents us with a very good test. We need to apply two things. The test of reasonableness, uh, whether this is reasonable, does it fit into my test of reasonableness? And the second thing is uh, using your Vivek Drashti or your wisdom to discern the, the power that you develop to discern between right and wrong. Yeah. So those are the two abilities that Bhagwan wants us to uh, develop right from the beginning, irrespective of uh, whether it's to do with our uh, spiritual development, our worldly development, our family lives. Do what is samyak and never give up on your Vivek Prashti. So those are two things, test of reasonableness. And number two, uh, the power to discern between right and wrong we should never be able to lose that. And that's why um, understanding uh, Bhagwan Mavi's philosophy from a broader perspective is very important so that we can apply it to the little, little things and problems that we face and challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you, Raja. Yes. Raja, yeah. the other question. I have a question, which is yes, about please. role models. Yes. Um, I, I can say I can uh, sort of uh, understand the importance of role models, but it's really difficult to find role models in life. And, uh, and, um, and I'm not sure whether it is our ego which comes in our way when we are thinking of uh, looking for when, you know, even when we see something, um, someone who is really, really amazing. Yet we will always have some, like Sandeep, I said, you know, uh, and it's this sort of, you know, we cannot accept what is. So I think as you were saying, our biggest stumbling block in accepting a role model is uh, our ego. Because the, the real model has a role model has say, or the real guru will be really harsh on you because they want to bring out the best of you. 
And in the process, if, if our ego comes in the way, then we will never be able to work with that role model. And I think in life, that's the, the ego is the stumbling block. Our willingness to give up the ego is the stumbling block. So it, what it says is we should not lose our dignity or self-esteem, but we should, the, the element of pride share, that needs to be worked on. And role models can only have a place if we allow that uh, pride and ego to, to kind of um, to settle away so that the best can be brought out in us in terms of the qualities that we want to develop. Can I just clarify something? I think you're talking about a mentor, aren't you? Somebody who guides you and... It's somebody who guides you along the yeah. way. Because yes. a role model could be somebody you admire, but necessarily don't have someone who's guiding you. Yeah. I mean, a, a simple role model, Russell Aben, when, when, we, when you were young and you were learning to cook, you have a role model. My family, my mom. Your mom, yeah. And yeah. we, we look upon them to get all the tricks and tips. No, I'm, I'm talking in general. And now people talk about role ah. models, you know, ah. great person, you know, et cetera. But those people are not going to be within your sphere of guiding you. That's what ah. I, mean. I I think the best guidance comes from the ones who are nearest to us. Absolutely. I agree with you. Completely agree with you. Yeah. 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 Now, all the siblings, our parents, people that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis can actually be our role models. Yeah, but I, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I but can be, can be up on a stumbling block, can be up to ego stumbling block, can be? Huh, anything yeah. we want to bring about change, it's our ego, I agree. Yeah, so... Um, what, what he's trying to tell us is... Sergeant Bai, just... can I just ask you uh, something? Can you just explore your earlier comments around uh, your test of reasonableness versus yes. the four E's that we were talking about earlier? Yes. And in particular, the devotion and focus energy in such a way that you're completely faithful and effectively you are really trusting somebody. And... There comes for me a dilemma. Where do you then put that test of reasonableness? When we, when, what is our overriding uh, principle when we look at Bhagwan Mahavi's teachings? What's our overriding principle? Wherever we want to test reasonableness, wherever we want to bring about, uh, where, where we want to develop the power of discernment, what's the overriding principle? What is right and wrong? Yeah, so that's that what I'm saying, is between, to make that difference between what is right and wrong, there is one basic principle that Bhagwan wants us to use. What's, what's this discerning principle? Yeah, I think it's very interesting. It, it just needs to reflect and contemplate to, to get this really, uh, you know, because what you want to do is that it becomes kind of part of your nature rather than, you know. Yeah. Becoming okay, Jay, um, so your first question, in terms of test of reasonableness, mm and also in terms of the power of discernment, is that which will work towards the kalyan or the betterment of the masses will be reasonable and will be right. And concept of ahimsa, concept of compassion yeah. will automatically follow. Then secondly, what you are saying is the uh, faith on a devotion chair, yes. It will come to a stage where it is your inherent nature to um, express these qualities. Yeah. yeah? And the, yeah. the path of sadhana is actually to develop, to become that these things actually become your second nature. Yeah. At the moment, we are we're kind of sitting on the fence where we need rules and regulations.
to develop these things called faith, devotion, yeah. Um, yeah. the right knowledge, and making sure that our charitra goes in the right direction. So we have a set of rules that we follow to make sure these things are achieved. But actually the path of sadhana is to what exactly what you said, you want these things to become your nature. Yes. Yeah. And this yes. is this is what the, the Mari Bhagavan's path of sadhana is actually that. Yeah. Yes. Inherent nature che, is what is coming out. Yeah. It's That's what nice. is. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Another great point that he's trying to bring out that do we like to hold on to things in life or we want to go towards the summit of life? Yeah. What he says is uh, what are these scaffoldings in life? That's what happened. Rasila Ben, what do you think is this scaffolding in life? But I was unmuted. All the sangro we do, you know. <laughs> everything huh? we collect and everything we sort of pile up. So everything yes. we do and we don't share it out. So, you know, if you were free, if you... That's how I understand it, you know. Yes, it's you, you're right. On, you're on the track. It is what he's trying to tell us. Is ke tamari wealth che, tamaru honor che, tamari family che, tamara friends che, all your acquaintances. Yes. How to scaffolding che? Mm. And yes. initially, everything is necessary. Um, and a punyati apana budu male che. So what are we going to do out of it? Oh, he's talking yeah. about attachment here. Yes, he's talking about the attachments. Yeah. Are you going to hold on to them? Or are you going to make the best use of these things that you have been presented to and get to the summit of life? Yeah. The problem is that anybody was to share wealth, honor, family, friends, acquaintances or our hold is so strong on them that they become poison-like for us. And he says you need to know when to drop these things. Yeah. How to drop this? And, and the dropping, he's actually, he's not talking about not having these things. The dropping he's talking about is these very things that are our scaffolding they will become the throne or the summit of life when we use it for the benefit of the masses around us. Yeah? Our wealth, our honor, our qualities, our knowledge, your friend circle, your acquaintances. How do you use all these things around you for the benefit of the larger society around you? And that's what he's calling changing it to the throne or reaching the summit, laying our life to the altar of human service. When Aponeto asked the first picture, I think that's what we like. Yeah, holding on to everything. This is the I situation. And the one on the summit is the V situation. The one who is WE is the one who can experience freedom. And that's what Gurudev is trying to communicate to us. Yeah. So yeah. I have problem. Bhai, one, eight bhai, minute. Bhai. one minute. Uh, I'll yeah. let you ask that question. I, I share a thought and then I let you ask that question. What is trying to communicate a was to uh, or having something is not a problem. The problem is your possessive, possessive attitude towards what you have. That's where the problem is. Uh, please continue with your question. Yeah. Uh, Samraiche? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say that COVID has been in the last one year. I'm going to say that 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 I think there is no 
અત્યારના કઈ યુઝ જ નથી કરી શકતા આપણે એ બધી વસ્તુઓનું તો આઈ થિંક કોવિડ હેઝ ટોટ અસ અ લોટ કે ઘણું લાઈફમાં શીખવાડ્યું બેનિફિટ somewhere who has a greater need than us yeah so as, yeah. as we said yeah. earlier ke aje bodu apne lage ke a suffering ke covid no situation ne ketla do dwarash the second year going uh, we are all undergoing it but i think a ke human race mate so the moto learning lessons individually we should get out of this that yes. what is it that it's trying to present to me in life yeah where where, mm-hmm. where did i go wrong towards prakriti or nature that now i have been presented with this yeah and and as we all agree that ours is the path of self responsibility i at apne to koi kayaj na as vadhya group ma apne koi kai na sake it's the chinese who brought it to us we brought it to ourselves we have contributed equally towards this happening yeah so it's a part of self responsibility and in scaffolding was his throne what it's saying is ke je punya thi male che nu agar apne su karu che punya nu band karu che ke pap nu band karu che yeah and he say that's the only way towards freedom is punya from punya yeah so that's the scaffolding and the throne Rajipai, really? I guess, yes. uh, Rajipai, I, I guess the other thing which sort of uh, the picture represents is the scaffolding is that all the people we have, every, everyone uh, is there for a reason and we are all and, and we, move, we move up. When we are at the top, then it is because of... Uh, um it is because of them it's appreciating them it's having gratitude ka apropote emnem nathi poycha there is so much so many circumstances people everything has has allowed us to also climb up uh, so in as much in as, in as much as the scaffold is in, is important and uh, gratitude and appreciation uh, in the current times absolutely important પણ જે જે વસ્તુની પકડ છે ને દેટ વી નીડ ટુ લીવ યા ફોર પીપલ વેલ્થ આવર સરકમસ્ટન્સીસ વી ઓલવેઝ વોન્ટ ટુ સિટ બેક એન્ડ ક્રાય અબાઉટ સિચ્યુએશન્સ દેટ વી વોર પુટ ઇન યા એન્ડ દેટ્સ વોટ ઇઝ ટ્રાઈંગ ટુ ટેલ અસ કે જેને ધોઝ હુ વોન્ટ ટુ બી સેટ લૂઝ નીડ ટુ ગો બિયોન્ડ ધીઝ થિંગ્સ તો એમાં આ જ્યારે આવ્યું વેન યુ આર એટ ધ ટોપ એન્ડ ગુરુદેવ ટોક્સ બાય વી કે ધીસ ઇઝ અ ધીસ ઇઝ અ કોન્સેપ્ટ ઓફ વી કે વોટ ડઝ ધેટ રિયલી મીન ઇન ધીસ બીકોઝ આમ તો આપણે જ્યારે આપણે ઉપર પહોંચે આપણે તો થાય કે આપણે જ કર્યું બધું વોટ ઇઝ ટ્રાઈંગ ટુ ટેલ અસ ઇઝ કે જે આપણને પુણ્યથી બધું મળે છે એનો સદઉપયોગ ક્યાં થવો જોઈએ વોટ ઇઝ ટ્રાઈંગ ટુ સે ઇઝ કે આઈમાંથી we philosophy ma javanu che and it jeff we philosophy the one who doesn't have actually karma band now i can introduce some technical bits karma band no more karan su che what is the main uh, reasoning behind bondage of karma attachment ah, so ja i ma thi v ma convert thai jay to vache drop su thai gyu big big mo big ego e- e- ego on attachment dropped mm. when we move from i to we and that is why it's talking about the freedom at that's we freedom, stage yeah. that's why it's talking about the freedom freedom karma no freedom ni vat kare che ke ek vakat attachment muki deso so we are going to be karma free 
that's the freedom that's the summit yeah અને આપણા માટે કર્મ ફ્રી સમિટ શું છે સ્કેફોલ્ડિંગ જરૂર છે યુલ ગેટ ટુ અ પોઈન્ટ વેન યુ નીડ ટુ ડ્રોપ ઇટ yeah great shall we move very interesting theory that it presents to us the theory of rebound yeah and gurudev again two classic examples from our life yeah ke jare um nilesh bhai ball pade che tyare su thai che what happens to the ball when it and when it hits the ground it bounces up again it bounces up again and what happens to water when it hits the rocks to pick the second picture yeah it splashes again with a greater force yeah and he says that do you apply this in your life what do we do when we have downfalls in our life okay apne we we are saying that we are the superior race we are the human beings but what do we do when we have a downfall do we have this ability to rebound like a ball with double the force do we have the ability to strike back against the rock and splash with greater force and he says mankind over time lost this ability and you need to bring that atyana time ma to apra ma te bo important che that how je samyak person hase the one who has a reasonable attitude towards life will really use this current times to bounce back like a ball into action yeah apne jo all the time complain situation mare su the nothing is going to happen he says use that downfall to bounce back again and the pulse of life will only come back when we bounce back and this is a very important secret that he is sharing with us ke ek tamaro downfall thai that should prepare you to uh strike back with double the force and come back into action much faster and higher than where you started off from but we as human beings what do we do yeah what what's our tendency what do we do we vote on self pity exactly every stroke of misfortune and we are into self pity and gurudev says ke je reasonable manas hase he will never allow that to happen yeah and i think this is an important lesson that we could have even seen our forefathers following that every pitfall that they had and they would bounce back into action apna je challenges che apna je circumstances face kariya che i think we have no reason to complain uh when you compare it to what they underwent some of them left homes when they were between 10 and 12 years old but they really knew how to chart life and gurudev is exactly talking the same thing ke koi bhi Uh, what is trying to tell us is do not do not uh, be afraid of your mistakes use those mistakes to bounce back into life very important for all of us another very important ideology that gurudev wanted to present and he says he was once in delhi and uh, he was at the top of the qutub minar so he, you know he he sort of climbed up into the higher the heights of the qutub minar and then he looked down upon the streets and he was trying to see ke abada je sounds che what what do they resonate to me like yeah is is it 
three, discordant sound, what do I need to do with it? And he says, at that time, I remembered that from a spiritual standpoint, every now and again, man needs to move into a higher plane of operation. Approach existence, che, approach thinking, che. What plane of existence are we on at the moment? What, what is this commotion and... Uh, very day-to-day, -day, very much involved with everything. Yes. Um, and, not giving uh, ourselves the space and the time to step back or to step away. Yes. And exactly that's what he was trying to say. Climbing the higher plane or looking at things. He was exactly telling us the same thing from climbing... You are the... muted, Rajan Bhai. No, I'm not muted. No, we can hear Rajan We can hear him. Uh, oh, why am I then? Okay. So what he was trying to say is when he meant the Kutub Minar, he meant that the higher plane of existence. Our problem is that we're involved in the mundane existence. And this is where we have commotion, where we have noise, we have banging. Yeah. And our old confusion, discordant thought processes. This is what he was trying to talk about. And he says, look, look at life from a distance, yeah? And time and again, move into the spiritual plane of existence. Look, life ne distance ki jo, yeah? Give yourself some distance and make space for less conflict, peace and bliss, and harmony to arise. And the different pathways of sadhana, whether we look at meditation, we look at the art of silence, we look at doing samai, we look at mantra sadhana, all this is trying, to, what it's trying to tell us is we need to move into a higher plane of existence so that we can create time where we resolve conflict, we can be more peaceful and blissful, we are in harmony, we're able to change our thought patterns and look at life with a wider and bigger picture in mind. That's what the objective is. And that's what he was saying, move to a higher plane of existence. So um, all the time, commotion, we need to move away from that. And this commotion is at the mind level. We need to give ourselves a break uh, to clear our thought processes, to clear our resonance, the wavelength at which we are uh, uh, resonating is very important. Maybe some Medusha sufferings can be blessings. Yeah. And this is exactly what Gurudev is telling us. That every suffering that we undergo is supposed to be a blessing. And yeah, misfortune and suffering has to be there. Otherwise, we would be out of the chakra of sansar. Yeah? So there is, there is bound to be misfortune and suffering. And the analogy he gave was the beating of the drum. So jare drum mati sound nikreche, the ena merayati nikreche ki koi striker joye. Does it, does it exactly the drum needs a striker? And what he's trying to tell us, okay, your music of life will never be there if you don't have the striker in your life. And the striker in your life is all the suffering that you're undergoing. That strikes you into different wavelengths of operation, and you resonate music, just like the drum does when the striker hits the drum. Yeah? We don't allow the drum to be, to have a strike. Yeah? So how are we going to resonate at a higher level if we don't understand the basics of suffering? Yeah? So again, he's saying that these are opportunities to develop strong personalities within ourselves. Every element of misfortune 
that you, you have undergone should actually reflect into your personality development. Your spiritual energy will resonate differently through all the suffering that you undergo. And you beat, then you start res the frequency and the wavelength at which you operate also has an impact on those around you. So both important chiapramante, how we take the challenges of life. And really good analogy that the, num the drum can never produce good sounds if it doesn't have a striker. So life must strike or share challenges, misfortunes, or what we are calling the sufferings. But actually, those are our stepping stones to our own development. And that's what Gurudev wants us to think about. Can you imagine Ikik analogy ma? He has made sure that he relates to something in nature which sits very well in our mind. Yeah. So the next thing, you want to be hay or you want to be gold? Rasila Ben. Hay or gold? Gold. According to gold. your pictures, I would love to be gold because I yes. don't want to burn. But not your opposite nature, chair. We it's burn like, like hay. hay. <laughs> we burn like hay. Yeah. And he says that the choice is yours. Yeah, whether you respond to what is provided to your in your outside environment or you react to it. Yeah, and a gold new response that it glitters even more once put into fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a he new re reaction and it burns. Mm. So, when we are faced with circumstances and suffering. Do we want to be hair like or we want to be gold like? Yeah. Do we want to shine out of these problems? Make sure that we develop ourselves better than where we started from. Yeah. So reactions and responses is what will make the difference between hair like and gold like. And that's what he's trying to communicate to us. The next thing he says is uh, great human beings learn to play with the dangers of life. Yeah. And human beings are like elephants, not like mosquitoes who like to be in the dark areas. Yeah. Very important is that we, we actually engage and put to the best use our energy for the service of humanity. Conflicts and struggles will be there, but how do we use them to develop ourselves? Or do we just want to be that little mosquito in the dark cell? How do you want your life to be? A battlefield for the strong one or a mosquito in the light in a dark cell? The life is yours. Yeah? Mm. So that genetic clarity of goals Jose, will be on the battlefield. And that's where we as Kshatriyas or the people of Mavir belong in the, in the battlefield. In the battle, who is with you? Who is with you? Who is with you? With the self. The real battle is with the self. And mm -hmm. that's the war that we need to win over. Great. The next thing is promises and temptations. And we all know Rajamati and uh, Rajanemi's story very well, where uh, Rajamati actually told Rajanemi that uh, are you wanting to be the person who eats his own vomit? Yeah, that's dog-like behavior, and it's better to die in that situation. So what uh, Gurudev is trying to tell us is you cannot compromise on your principles. No matter what your temptations are, the, the art of life is never make compromises. The Maharaji core principles che can compromise not for a successful life. So that's what he presented in keeping your word. Uh, Ratnami's story in uh, 
Utra Dhyan Sutra chapter 22 has been presented very well. And then he says that uh, benevolent exploitation for survival. Uh, we as Shravaks and Shravikas, we have to work, we have to earn to survive and also make other people survive. And what do we do? We, we want to make sure that we churn out the world's resources like the first figure uh, at the expense and cause injury and harm to other forms of life? Or shall we be like the second picture where our exploitation as for survival, for the beneficial use of those around us? Okay, well, what, where are we at this stage and where should we be? We are really misusing the environment. As you can see, there's a lot of climate change all over the world. Yes, um, yes. And uh, we have squeezed the earth out. And I think the pandemic is, is partly as a result of this imbalance. Exactly. That we've it's, created. Yeah. Um, so it says that for survival, you will need things. But how do you obtain those things? How are you doing? Tamari economic activities chair, how do you make sure that they are conducted with minimum violence and injury to other forms of life around us? And he says that only take that which is absolutely necessary for your comfortable living. Rajan, I have to say, this is the most difficult concept to put into practice in today's world. And ah. in a simple example, okay, if we all like mangoes, I'm right in London, Mahavichi, okay? Yes. So look at the carbon footprint that it has done and what difference, uh, what difference, but we still go and buy it. And the more you buy, the more you create the carbon footprint and you create economy for people in the other side of the world. So there's a ah. big dilemma about creating jobs and, econ and you know, uh, wealth for people who are on the other side of the world. Yeah. Which, which is asking for a higher level of uh, thought process, but where should it reach? I'm not following you, so I don't know how to no, answer. Jo, first no, bow to change. Ke mane bo bhaave chetle ho kya chhu? No, but you also think ke okay, if I buy, then somebody else nu mechai, so it creates a, exactly. a, a line of follow. Uh, Look at that chain, and ane maro bhaav no, producer je je ne mango se plant kiri thi ne kya sudhi jo tamaro bhaav pochi jai, yeah. Then, then you can take right. a bit everything in the world and then you find excuses for things. Um, so I think what you're trying to say is whatever you do, just get what is absolutely needed because sometimes... Exactly. What you reasonably, comfortable. reasonably comfortable living and make sure that you're not stepping on somebody else's footsteps. Yeah? Jo mango leva ma bija panch chara ne hinsa thati hoi pampachi mare mango ne khawani. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's trying to tell us. Yeah, I was thinking about Amma, it. Yeah. Yes. And Gurudev's example was very good. And he says, in the olden times, how, how were we milking the cows? By hand. How did we? By hand. And the first milk Exactly. Yeah. So, in the dependence, the first milk was made. Thinking should be like that, that whatever I am creating first is for the benefit of others. But say what remains is for my self-use, for my reasonable living. 
પણ આપનું ઓપોઝિટ છે ઓપોઝિટ છે ઓફ કોર્સ યસ કે પહેલા મારું કમ્ફર્ટેબલ લિવિંગ અને જો કાંઈ બચે તો બીજા માટે યા યા અને બચવાનું છે જ નહીં બીકોઝ કમ્ફર્ટેબલ લિવિંગ ની કોઈ સીમા નથી યસ યા એન્ડ ધેટ્સ વાય ઇટ સ્ટાર્ટેડ ધ અધર વે ધ થિંક અબાઉટ સમબડી એલ્સ ફર્સ્ટ બીફોર ફુલફિલિંગ યોર ઓન નીડ્સ હમ યા યા then then the the absolute necessity will become within a framework which is operational mm. so his his ideology is very nice it's an ideal mm. way of living in this world and the resources that we can create can be used for the benefit of so many people around mm. us yeah yeah thank you okay. The next thing it talks about is hardness and softness. So, you know, the coconut is very hardness and under softness. And the one is a stone. So, again, we have to talk about the beginning and it's coming again. Okay, you, need to be, you need to be hard in terms of your principles, the truth that you stand for, the values that you stand for. but at the other end you also need to be soft in terms of the love the respect the dignity that you give other people the compassion that we express the the flexibility that we have in life yeah to apne patthar banu che ke nariyar banu che yeah hey the choice is ours yeah and in life we need to make that important choice ke apne really our nature should be like the coconut very nurturing just a few more points and we are going to be through and then he says where does the best music of life beat from ha ane ek tek iron slab hoy ane ek butter hoy some times you need to be hard sometimes you need to be soft ane apne jare guitar che એના જે કોડ્સ છે ટુ ગેટ ધ બેસ્ટ મ્યુઝિક આઉટ સમટાઈમ્સ યુ નીડ ટુ ક્રિએટ ટેન્શન એન્ડ સમટાઈમ્સ યુ નીડ ટુ રિલીઝ ધેટ ટેન્શન ધ હાર્ડનેસ નાઉ ઇફ વી એપ્રિશિએટ ધિસ ઇન લાઈફ ધેન વી આર ગોઈંગ ટુ બી એબલ ટુ હેવ અ વેરી બેલેન્સ્ડ લાઈફ અને આની માસ્ટરી કે ક્યાં હાર્ડનેસ જોઈએ છે ક્યાં ટેન્સાઇલ થવાનું છે ક્યાં સોફ્ટનેસ ની જરૂર છે very important not only for ourselves but also to have and make the best of relationship with people around us so the best music of life bit when there is a balance between tension or jam softness and hardness can be released and then he as he goes towards the end he talks about life and death So we've been taught that where life is, there is breath, che, and where there is no breath, there is no life. That's our basic teaching. But he actually says that life's new definition is making your existence felt by others through sacrif- through sacrifice. So where you make your life, where you make your sacrifice, that is life. and the day you have a selfish existence you are already dead yeah so we need to think back and see do do i want to use every moment of my breath for the benefit of those around me or is it just for my own existence yeah and the last thing which we'll touch again upon um was the spirit of ahimsa and he, he's just using ahimsa as a example but it applies to everything that we do in life what has happened over a period of time is we have only looked at things from the gross level apne je sukshma che or the core of things the bhav of everything has been forgotten and he says that ahim sanu je mur pran che je bhav che we have forgotten in life and what we have been left with is just the outer covering of do's and don'ts 
Yeah, and that's why life has become so miserable. And he says, go back to the core, the the bow of everything that Bhagwan was trying to communicate to us, so that we can re-establish it at the thought level, at the feeling level, and make it have a greater impact on life. So JB was to apre follow karta hoy. Let's try to go beyond the bow of it. And not just remain at the core of following the do's and the don'ts. That's why, for to the outside world, Jainism has been reduced to a religion of do's and don'ts. Nobody really understands the core essence of what Bhagwan was trying to tell us. There are lots of tips that have been shared today. We need to look, sit back and look at each one of these tips and see. What's the core or the most important thing that I need to adopt to make uh, the changes um, in my life? The whole book itself um, is, as I said earlier, Satyam Shivam Sundaram. It wants to create beauty not only in our inner world, but it wants. Gurudev is trying to tell us that wherever you are, whatever circumstances you are faced with, there is no escapism. Make the most of it, and how can you make your life, both inner and outer, the most beautiful experience? So this book is really worth exploring. Every time that I look at it again. Um, we're able to see that he's trying to communicate lots of depth to us, and every reading renders a new perspective. Sandeep Pai um, and Nilesh Pai, SVP London, I take this opportunity to thank you for allowing me to present my thoughts to you tonight. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience for me again to look at this book. At a different angle. Thank you once Thank again. You. Thank you, Rajan. It's been fantastic, actually. It's really Thank good. Thank you, Rajan. Bhai. Um, from all of us in London, it's it's eleven thirty there. Um, and you are still awake. Um, so thank you very much, Rajan, for 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 honoring us with your presence. And we will of course call you again, so you can't escape that quickly. It was a very interesting lecture, um, and and you really uh, thrown a great light on Guru Dev's um, uh, Amarvani. So thank you once again, um, all of you. And now I will just request Rasila if you can recite the Manglik, please. <laughs> Om Namo Arhantanam, Namo Sitanam, Namo Ayarianam, Namo Vachayanam, Namo Lui Sabbasahunam, Esu Panchanamukaro, Sabbu Pava Panasano, Mangalanancha Savisim Patamam, Hawaii Mangalam, Chattari Mangalam, Arahanta Mangalam, Sita Mangalam, Sahu Mangalam, Kevali Panato Tammo Mangalam Chattari Logutama Arihanta Logutama Sita Logutama Sahu Logutama Kevali Panato Tammo Logutamo Chattari Sharanam Pavachami Arahante Sharanam Pavachami Siddhe Sharanam Pavachami Sahu Sharanam Pavachami Kevali Panatam Dhammam Sharanam Pavachami Thank you. Um, just to let you know, tomorrow morning uh, we have a session with uh, Pujya Acharya Sri Chandaji Maharaj. So those, I think, it was shared in the various WhatsApp groups. So those who are not, who are obviously at home and, and not doing much, um, please do make an effort to join. It's a very rare opportunity. And I um, wish you all a good evening. Rajan, once again, thank you very, very much for taking out your time and, and giving us this wonderful thing. And everybody, if you can unmute and give a clap to Rajan, bye, please.
thank you. I am. Um, thank you for inviting me, and uh, it's great to engage with like-minded people. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rajan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.